περάσουμε τώρα στο επόμενο θέμα. Το ελληνικό παρατηρητήριο Hellenic Observatory του London School of Economics διοργάνωσε την 3η 22 Ιουνίου την 18η ετήσια διάλεξη, η οποία πραγματοποιήθηκε διαδικτυακά. Κύριο ομιλητή ήταν ο Υπουργό Μετανάστευση και Ασύλου τη Ελλάδο, κ. Νότη Μηταράκη. Θέμα τη διάλεξη ήταν η μεταναστευτική κρίση και οι επιπτώσει τη στην Ευρώπη. Την εκδήλωση συντόνισε ο προφέσορ Κέβιν Φίδερστον, ο οποίο είναι ο διευθυντή του Ελληνικού Παρατηρητηρίου και καθηγητή σύγχρονων ελληνικών σπουδών και ελληνική πολιτική στο LSE. Στην εκδήλωση συμμετείχε και η αναπληρώτρια καθηγήτρια στην Νομική Σχολή του Εθνικού και Καποδιστριακού Πανεπιστημίου Αθηνών, κ. Μαρία Γαβουνέλη. Συζητήθηκαν τα διδάγματα αλλά και οι τρόποι αντιμετώπιση αυτή τη ανθρωπιστική κρίση με τη μετανάστευση στι ακτέ τη Ευρώπη. Στο βίντεο που ακολουθεί θα σα παρουσιάσουμε αποσπάσματα από αυτή την ενδιαφέρουσα διάλεξη και τη συνομιλία. Over the years, we've been fortunate to host many leading figures uh, from Greece. The patriarch, prime ministers, leaders of the opposition, senior ministers, senior academics, and many others. Today, we welcome a Greek minister who is in the eye of the storm, as it were. Nertis Mitarakis is Greece's minister of migration and asylum. As such, he is at the very center of handling one of Europe's enduring crises, that of how to manage and pro process the flow of refugees and asylum seekers, as many flee oppression and persecution in countries such as Syria, Afghanistan, Somalia, and many others. At its peak, the UNHCR estimated in 2015 that Greece received some 850,000 refugees. Since then, the number of new entrants has fallen very significantly after the European Union agreed a new deal with Turkey in 2016 to try to stop the flow of irregular migrants. And a new deal at Turkey, a new deal with Turkey, uh, is at the top of the agenda for this week's European Council uh, meeting. Still today, thousands of desperate people languish in overcrowded camps as national authorities, the European Union, and the United Nations struggle with the numbers. This is a crisis in which Europe is said not to have shared the burden. Instead, governments have shifted the blame and responsibility to others. How is Greece coping with the crisis? What can Greece expect from Europe? And what kind of Europe do we see in this refugee crisis? As I say, our speaker, Notis Mitarakis, is in the hot seat. Not only is he minister responsible for migration policy, he's also a member of parliament elected by one of the islands most impacted by the refugee crisis, that is, Hios in the Aegean. As such, he faces many conflicting pressures. Notis will be well known to many Greeks uh, here in London, uh, as he has spent many years in the UK. Indeed, I'm very pleased to say that the minister in the past has attended many events of the Hellenic Observatory uh, here at the LSE. So we're, we're very pleased to welcome him back. Notice has had a long career in the private sector and has worked for many international institutions, including the World Bank, the EBRD, and the Black Sea Trade and Development Bank. He's a graduate of ANSIAD in Paris and of the University of Oxford. To respond to Notis Mitarakis, we are delighted to welcome Mar Maria Gavunelli. Maria is Associate Professor of International Law at the University of Athens. She is the President of the Greek National Commission for Human Rights, a member of the Managing Board of the National Transparency Authority, and a Senior Policy Advisor to Eliumep. Um, Currently, she's leading a new initiative at the University of Athens, a research hub uh, for migration studies, in which uh, the schools of law and medicine and media are teaming up with universities around the world, particularly Sciences Po in Paris. She's published extensively on migration uh, issues. And last year, I understand Maria joined an advisory group to the ministry 
advising on issues such as determining which countries are safe for, res- re- for asylum seekers to return to. We very much look forward to hearing her academic uh, perspective on these complex and difficult uh, issues. So there's a lot of interest in today's discussion. Uh, It is a big issue, not only for Greece, but for Europe. And I can think of no better person to uh, address us, to start off this discussion, than the good friend of the Hellenic Observatory, the Minister Notis Mitrakis. Thank you so much, Kevin, for the kind introduction. I'm delighted to be attending the annual lecture of the Hellenic Observatory of the LSE. I'm sorry we can't meet in person uh, due to the pandemic. Hopefully, from next year, we'll be able to attend in person all the LSE events. And as you rightly said, I had the privilege when living in London to attend many of the events. And the Hellenic Observatory has played a key role in strengthening debate on issues that affect Greece. And in the case today, an issue that affects both Greece and the European Union. Uh, Migration is and will remain a challenge for Europe and the Western world. Millions of people migrate every year. Many more would do so if given the opportunity. Migration, as we see it, can be distinguished in legal migration and irregular migration. Legal migration involves people moving to another country for studying, for working, or for investing, or for other reasons prescribed in national legislations. Major universities around the world, like the LSE, play a key role in advancing global mobility and legal migration. And it is legal migration, for example, that led to the economic development of the city of London in the previous decades. Greece supports legal migration, and it is a stated position in the developing negotiation for the new European Pact on Migration and Asylum that Europe needs to work more in providing legal pathways. Needless to say that the demographic situation in Europe does require measures to increase the population in a sustainable way. While migration does play an important role, we need at the same time to consider the extent, the limits to which Europe can apply successful integration policies when it comes to legal migration. Climate change is also a structural change that will further fuel migration in the years and decades to come, according to many studies. And on top, we anticipate the cyclical impact, the cyclical change of the post-pandemic world, as unemployment and lack of social welfare systems in a number of countries, countries of origin, are expected to increase global imbalances. And it is imperative that we increase the support we give to developing countries, aiming to reduce the cause roots of irregular migration and work with them in establishing and managing legal pathways. We cannot leave international migration to be managed by smuggling networks who make fortunes from people's misfortunes. Together with the proven inability of member states to return home with safety and dignity, those not entitled to international protection has led European public opinion becoming more cautious with regard to migration in the recent years. In our case, Greece follows a strict but fair migration policy. We clearly provide asylum to those entitled to, but do not want to be the gateway to Europe for smuggling networks, nor can we allow smugglers to decide who will migrate to Europe. Thanks to our strict but fair migration policy, We've seen results over the last two years. We observe a stabilization of low arrival rates. They're down 80% in 2020. They're further down 70% in 2021. From 72,000 arrivals in 2019 to 15,000 arrivals in 2020 to approximately 3,000 arrivals in 2021. Consequently, we don't have this overcrowding in the camps in the islands. At some point, we hosted over 40,000 people in five islands. Now the number is down to 7,000 people. Most of the camps now in Greece are below their capacity. And overall, we have a 75% capacity utilization. From 95,000 people living in camps in Greece, now we are below 50,000. From 140,000 pending asylum applications, we now are approximately 54,000. 
And out of 121 accommodation centers we operated last year, only 37 are operating now. And we're constructing six new multipurpose camps in the entry points of Greece, meeting the strict EASO standards to provide the appropriate living conditions and at the same time, a safe environment for asylum seekers, staff, and the local communities. We were able to accelerate an asylum service and reduce the backlog. Our objective is to have no backlog by the end of 2021. But clearly, migration is not a national challenge. It is a common European one. And we're now talking in Europe after the September 2020 proposals of the European Commission. The co-legislators, the Council of the European Union and the European Parliament are debating seven key regulations, which are jointly called the new pact on migration and asylum. And it needs to recognize that no member state should bear this proportionate responsibility and that all member states should contribute to solidarity on a mandatory and consistent basis. This pact includes three pillars. The first, a more efficient and faster asylum procedures from entry to return or integration, according to the individual case, a pillar on solidarity and a pillar on the external dimension when we need to establish mutually beneficial relations with countries of origin and transit, as also Mario Draghi mentioned a few hours ago when he was in Germany. And this balance between solidarity and responsibility is not achieved today at the proposals. This new pact needs to address the challenge. We need to properly revisit a policy proposal that has already been floated around, namely the mutual recognition of recognition of positive asylum decisions, which will facilitate the mobility within the European Union of recognized refugees. As we apply the free movement of recognized beneficiaries within our own countries, there should be no restrictions for the recognized refugees within the European Union. Very critical also is to have effective returns of those not qualifying for asylum, and this would be key to our efforts. And overall, Europe has not been successful over the years in achieving the returns of those not entitled to protection. Now, when it comes to the way forward, I think the dialogue should be structured around three pillars. First, a strategic partnership with non-EU countries. This means working with the countries of origin and the countries of transit, establishing mutual beneficial relationship to prevent the root causes of migration and work together with these countries for returns of those not entitled to protection. A second very important pillar is bringing down the business model of human smugglers. As I said before, we cannot leave it to smugglers to select who comes and who does not come to Europe. And the third pillar is enhancing the legal pathways of migration. Migration remains a very complicated issue, a very divisive issue along the political aisle. And I think it's going to, it's going to be an issue that we'll, we'll keep on discussing for a long time, given especially the current progress made in the new pact. Thank you, Kevin. Let me pass to uh, Maria uh, for her um, comments and reply. Thank you so much, Kevin, and thank you so much uh, to the Hellenic Observatory for, for your invitation uh, to join the discussion and ask questions to the minister, really, because this is what uh, this is my function here today. Minister, I was very pleased to hear that uh, you were talking about your uh, expectations uh, about uh, the pact on migration and asylum, because as you very correctly posed, as, uh, commented uh, uh, asylum, the whole process of migratory flows in uh, towards Europe is actually a European problem and not uh, a Greek problem. And actually, it should not be a problem. It is part of uh, the, cycl the cyclical nature of uh, the human experience. It's part of the human condition. Uh, and as such, we need to make sure that it is not a tragedy. It is not a catastrophe, it's part of life. And if uh, a person migrates, it can migrate back. It is not a one-off kind of suggestion. And once we realize these fundamental issues, then we can start moving towards regulating reality in a way that is not so strictly 
blocked, if you like, by uh, ideologies. I heard uh, you commenting on the fact that you are looking towards mutual recognition uh, during the negotiations of the pact uh, in, in an effort to set aside se uh, secondary movements. Uh, where are you? Are you sure that everybody else is also on, on the same page? Because I do have concerns about that. Um, you suggested a strategic uh, partnership with third parties. I hope you're not talking about outsourcing because that is clearly against the Geneva Convention in terms uh, and, and in the international law that I know and teach. Um, uh, we're talking of, you, you were talking correctly about uh, human smugglers, but that really requires uh, legal pathways to migration. And in the European Union, as we speak, uh, we literally do not have legal pathways to migration. It is a disgrace. I am very, very unafraid to use uh, strong words in that respect. The idea of having a blue card that does not function is really a disgrace for you. Uh, you referred to this type of legal migration with rules. Minister, there are no rules on legal migration in Europe. And there are no rules on legal migration in Greece either. Safe countries. We have a recent decision designating Turkey as a safe third country for third country nationals with a refugee profile, such as Syrians, Afghanis, and Somalis. This procedure is also enforceable to applications, to pending applications for asylum. And may I remind you that almost 80% of those came from the designated countries, Syria, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and Somalia. Uh, and may I also remind you that that decision was made without the opinion of the committee uh, I'm supposed to participate in. We know, Minister, that you cannot return these people to Turkey. We all know that. So, what is it that we're doing right now? We're playing politics with the lives of people? Are we dehumanizing migration in the same way that we have protested when others tried to do so in March last year? Why are we taking the blame for a decision that at the end of the day is not up to us? The number of trapped people in the Aegean Islands will inevitably rise as they wait for deportation the maximum detention time will lapse. And these people would have to be released. So there are going to be around the country, people without papers. We are creating a system with inputs, but no outputs. Is that sustainable? Is that something that we would be happy to deal with? Two final points. In spite of public statements, there is a steady flow of information regarding pushbacks and forceful removals. Why is that? The Greek National Commission for Human Rights has conducted uh, a meeting, has invited all uh, interested parties to come and talk to us in conference. And they all came from the Coast Guard to the NGOs and everybody. And there seems to be some kind of a methodology developing out there. What are we doing about that? The Greek National Commission is about to launch an initiative uh, recording verifiable incidents and, and letting the appropriate authorities, including FRA, know about these incidents. We're not, included, we're not involved in the handling of that, but we just record the incidents, we're going to be reporting the incidents. Final point, and I stop there. Integration. I have a feeling that integration was put on hold before it even started. The pandemic helped in that respect. Um, we have seen your colleagues in other countries sending letters to you, protesting uh, about secondary movements uh, suggesting that somehow there is a, a systemic lack of integration that is being used as a tool to push people away from Greece. What are we doing in terms of integration? We have worked with the UNHCR 
in setting up certain principles of integration, which we're going to uh, publicize uh, next week, hopefully. Um, but we understand that we're still thinking about these issues. Can you hop on into that? Thank you so much. Let's start from the very beginning. Is migration a problem? As such, it's not a problem. Legal migration has is, is never been a problem. And most of us have been migrants in our lifetime. I've migrated to a number of European countries. My wife the same, my parents the same. Migration is very normal. And I have relatives in many parts of the world. What it is a problem is when smugglers make money selecting people, picking them up from Afghanistan, taking them to a transient country, putting them on an unseaworthy dinghy, risking their lives in exchange for a few thousand euros or dollars that the smuggler made. And these people come to Europe because the smugglers decided to do so. This, for me, it's a huge problem. And we need to eradicate smuggling networks because that has nothing to do with refugee protection. It's a business and it's a big business. Legal migration, I agree with you. We need to do more. I obviously said that at the very beginning. The blue card, it's very early to say it's not going to work because it's just now being put into the statute book. It hasn't been used yet. We recently in Greece signed around 15,000 work permits for people to come and work in the summer, agricultural workers through a new platform that connects the application for somebody to come to Greece with his social security file, his tax file, to make sure he's paid properly. So we're not only implementing a legal pathway for seasonal workers, we're ensuring that these people come in are properly paid, properly treated. And that's very important as an European Union country. We think Turkey is a safe country for people coming from Syria, Afghanistan, Bangladesh, Pakistan, and Somalia. Already Europe said that Syria is safe for the Syrians. So that the concept that Turkey is a safe country has been established by the European Council in 2016. We're, stop, we're expanding this now. And I obviously honestly think that there is no risk in Turkey from somebody coming from these countries. And Turkey, it is a properly functioning country. And there is a joint statement that regulates how these people will return. And Turkey was accepting returns until February 2020. True, because of the pandemic, they stopped. We recognize that. As you know, the official position of the European Commission is that the statement is fully alive. And this is not the view of the Greek government, it's the view of the European Commission, which we agree. And we're working with Turkey to make sure that returns start again. I need to admit one thing, and we're guilty of, of taking hundreds of millions out of the pockets of smugglers. We have destroyed a business model. This big business is very unhappy. And this, in many faces, are complaining why we're, we're killing their business. Why we're not letting their clients come irregular to the European Union? And they say so through different facades. And that's, I'm very clear about it. There's a lot of facades for this big multi-hundred million business, which is called people smuggling. And we need to all work together to eradicate the phenomenon of smugglers making money out of poor people. My final point, the point of secondary movements and integration. Indeed, we got a letter from some EU ministers. First of all, complaining why we give travel documents to recognize refugees. As you know, this is a direct responsibility arising from the Geneva Convention, and it is European key. We're obliged to provide residence permit and travel documents to all recognized refugees. It would be a breach of our obligation if, if we didn't. Now, what drives secondary flows, it's a big question. And if you have seen my response to the letter received by my colleagues, my key argument is imbalances in social welfare states. Some countries are complaining that Greece doesn't have free housing to give to refugees. I reminded my esteemed colleagues that Greece abolished social housing as part of the memorandum. You know, Kevin remembers all the discussions in 2010, 2011, 2012, when the same countries asked us to slash our social spending. And now the Greek minimum guaranteed income is a fraction of what it is in these countries. We don't have free social housing. But this is not lack of an integration program. We provide for refugees, A, full access to what we call the social welfare state, so they get the same we would get in similar circumstances. And B, we run what we call a state-of-the-art program, the e program, 
run by the International Organization of Migration, funded by the European Commission. And by the way, all this emergency funding expires this year, as you know. There's going to be so much lack of funding in the next years that most of the services you know today will no longer exist. And Greece officially said that to the European Council that we're very concerned about many programs we run today. So the future doesn't seem we'll, we'll be able financially to do more programs than the ones we're doing today. But we do have an integration program. But when some countries provide social welfare, which is a multiple of the salary somebody would get if he worked in a field in Greece, why would a rational economic actor stay in Greece and make, let's say, 700 euros working in a farm where in other European countries can make two or 3,000 euros a month by not working? And this was my response to my colleagues. Greece does provide the program. We provide no discrimination, equal access. And I think that's what we're supposed to do and that's the best we can do. Στο σημείο αυτό θα θέλαμε να ευχαριστήσουμε το Hellenic Observatory του LSE για την ευγενική παραχώρηση του οπτικακουστικού υλικού και για την παρουσίασή του στην ελληνική τηλεόραση του Λονδίνου. Ευχαριστούμε θερμά για τη συνεργασία. Ολόκληρη αυτή την διάσκεψη μπορείτε να τη βρείτε σε όλα τα social media του Hellenic Observatory.